Hey guys, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. And if you're a returning subscriber, as always, welcome back and I appreciate the support. Guys, I want to get into something today. And uh, I, I was going to do this yesterday, but you know, I had a lot of things going on. You know, we had the live stream. I appreciate everybody that came out and showed support, you know. Um, and we also had the unveiling of the tape of uh, Tyree Nichols. You know, and I gave a reaction video to that. But uh, this story was on the back burner, so I'm going to just still put it out. And I want to talk a little bit about today about uh, my opinion and thoughts, honest opinion and thoughts about Stevie Bags Jr. You know, he's over there at uh, Bethune-Cookman. You guys seen it all over social media and the news. You know, him and uh, Ed Reed are going back and forth and exchanging words. And I understand all that, and I don't really... You know, it's already established that Ed Reed is not coming back as the coach. You know, last night, it was aired that uh, Bethune-Cookman staff had spoke to the students. And I'll leave the link in the description box below. You guys can check that out and get what you want. But, I mean, I'll be talking a little bit about that as well in this thing. But my main focus of this video, like I said, is I don't think Stevie Baggs is a leader. And... I just, I'm just not feeling it. You know what I mean? You come off to me, it's fake, envious, self-driven, you know, and not in a good way. Selfish, I guess they would count as the same thing. He loves attention and, you know, he has to be a part of something. He doesn't have natural leadership capabilities. You know, this guy right here, Talks to talk. Hey, I'm a uh, inspirational leader. You know, I'm a motivational uh, speaker. I played football. I uh, this, I uh, that, so on and so forth. I understand that. My issue with him is this woke shit. You know, I'm woke. I'm woke. Okay. As men. Ladies and gentlemen that watch me, we are natural architects of solution. We try to create change. We try to be honest about things. We try to stand up for what is right, most of us. We try to protect, you know, society is on us to protect, provide, problem solve, everything and, and everything in between. If you really look at the whole situation, you know, there's a, uh, you know, with the Bethune-Cookman thing, Stevie Baggs had association to Ed Reed, right? But it just pains me, you know, and I said it in various videos, you know, going back this week. The thing that hurt me the most was the situation with, you know, how they got him out of there. Ed Reed new Stevie Bags and then like just seeing on live media when the students told that Ed uh Stevie Bags, somebody that knows Ed Reed personally worked out with him, trained with him, has some type of camaraderie with him, and was there while he was there and witnessed what he was trying to do, create change, shit on him in front of people, you know, faculty and staff, just to stay on that side of the fence. And I don't feel that. I don't feel that. You run around here with this, I'm woke. Like I said before, what did you sleep from? What did you wake up from? What did you realize? I'm woke. All of a sudden you have knowledge. Knowledge of what? When you woke up, what, what was revealed to you? Ladies and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. It's very easy for somebody that gets up in age, and I think he's in his 30s, early 40s, to speak wisdom to young children. Anybody can say something that's snazzy or something that sounds intelligent at any given time. You know, and that don't mean, you know, you're right. But my thing is this, I think he's a hypocrite and I definitely think he's fake. Point an example. The way you said where you was addressing Ed Reed when you were sitting at that banquet. 
You so pro HBCU, I mean pro BCU. You sound like a fanboy. Yeah, Ed Reed ain't coming back, so ain't no use of talking about it. Just let it go. You're good. Okay, I understand that. But you can't tell somebody how to feel and how to react when they feel a certain way. And the way they react, you was part of the uh, reason. I am. I have no doubt in my head that Stevie Bags, because remember, Reggie Theus, yeah, he's the athletic director. He's a basketball coach. I cannot, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, Stevie Bags was not in Reggie Theus's ear in return in, in, uh, with Ed Reed, about Ed Reed. Stevie Bags comes off to me like he got a secret agenda that he, you know, is trying to aspire or go after. Whereas, you know, only he knows what it was. It is. Like I said, Stevie Bags likes the limelight. And I think, looking at the whole thing and with that meeting that they had the other night with the football students, and like I said, I'll leave you, leave you the link. You can look at it. And I'm trying to put two and two together. This is how I come up with it. I think Ed Reed directly spoke to the president probably once or twice. And he didn't have a direct connection to the president. And I also think the president is full of shit. The president, in the meeting with the kids, I didn't know about the mold problem. I didn't know about the uh, locker room and the thing, this is all new to me. You the fucking president and you claim you walk around the campus all the time. The athletic director is a huge position. I bet the basketball team got what they need. How you don't know what's going on in the, own, the, the whole university that you're supposed to be governing over as a president? That right there tells me that something's wrong. And I think Ed Reed, his main connection, his main uh, connection to the president was Reggie Theus. And like I said, they didn't see eye to eye. Reggie wasn't answering his calls that created him to blow up on social media or whatever. And we have that. And then we have Stevie on the sideline. Why you say something? You had it good. You, you, you shouldn't have. Uh. That's not woke behavior. If you want to be the uh in it, you could have been like, hey, man, you got to understand how Ed Reed's coming from a position. We football players. Yeah, this is not the University of Miami, but I know this man. You could have vouched for him and stuck up for him, but you didn't. You let him go. Why? Because he was a bigger star than you. It's something in you that it's something in you that made it to where, like, you know, he's dispensable. And it could have helped your position. He could have helped you. He could have helped you too. Yeah, you played uh for eleven teams in ten years, and you know, nobody's laughing at that or nobody's talking about that because that is a hell of an achievement for somebody that's athletic. So I'm not going to bash you on that. But, bro, I think, man, you got some darkness in your heart, and it's messed up. It's messed up. You standing up there with, you know, when they talking about Ed Reed ain't coming back and talking to the students, threatening them, hey, don't talk to Ed Reed, stop bringing it up, or we'll take your scholarships. You were standing right up there with them on that uh, them terrorist tactics, threatening somebody. How you going to... Have kids come to the school, and this is to everybody. How are they going to have kids come into the school, tell them it's a great place, and we'll take care of you, and uh, have pride in the school, and represent the football team and all this stuff, and then threaten to take it away from them when they figure out, hey, this is a righteous cause, and Ed Reed was right for us. And they get mad at them for thinking everybody's a free-thinking individual, and that's the thing. We can't have this herd mentality. Can't have it. That's what's wrong with us now. We're being herded mentally. With all these stupid ass hashtags, what we hear, what we see, you know, telling us you ain't cool if you do this or you ain't shit if you do that. or to, This is the place to be. If you ain't over here with us, you ain't nobody and all this stuff. Listen, we are resilient people. We can be silly at times, but we are resilient people. But listen, you have to think for yourself. As men. And the reason why I'm coming at uh, Stevie Bags is he very hypocritical. You sitting up here talking about motivational speaking and all this stuff. I've seen some of the videos you was in and some of the stuff you said. Don't even make sense. 
You played for 11 teams in 10 years, but you was in the NFL. You had a shot. He going to sit up here in one of his things talking to kids. You know, NFL stands for niggas for lease. They'll use you up. When did, it, when did you realize uh, that? When you was in the league or when you got rejected in the league and got out the league? When did you realize that? Is that, that part of when you was woken up and the NFL wasn't for you? What do the CFL stand for? You play it up there a lot. What does arena, the Arena Football League, whatever the acronym is, what, what, what is that? See, anybody can make these colorful acronyms to make themselves sound intelligent and righteous and have all this fucking wisdom and knowledge and whatever. Stupid shit. You got to under, always understand something. It's the way you see it, the way somebody else see it, and the way it is. Universal law will always trump bullshit. And this motherfucker is not in line with universal law. You got all this knowledge and wisdom, but you was on the show loving Hip Hop Atlanta. One of the worst things that ever came out that contribute to messing up the minds of us, especially young ladies, of how to be. All this, all this stupid diction and crazy stuff. In life, you part of the solution or you part of the problem. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker was on a show called Match Made in Heaven on We. I didn't even know what the fuck We was. We Network or whatever. He on there on a reality show like The Bachelor. But look at the twist. He on a show looking for love. Finally trying to find a wife. Bro, you got to go on a show to do that? And know the shows is fictional. These are reality TV shows. I'm not taking nobody word that was on a reality TV show that spread a bunch of BS. He on the show looking for love, but one of the kicks of the show is his mom's there and, and they got to impress the mom to get to him. What the fuck kind of shit is that? If that, not, if that is not some simp shit, I don't know what it is. If they came to me with that concept, no matter how much they paid, I would immediately think this is not good for the black community. Because some people, just like with rap music, they believe that shit is real. This is going to have a negative impact on somebody that's watching it. Be it a grown man, grown woman, or anybody. Torture ain't got to be, torture and oppression ain't got to be physical. It can also be mental, and the mental is worse than the physical. These type of shows that he was on, this show here, where he was the main bachelor, they fighting and all that other dumb shit. Bro, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. Talking about you ain't always been right, but you about righteousness. If you was, you would have never fucked with that bullshit. Ever. Running around here, I'm woke. You point to your fucking head. For fucking what? For what? For what? Guys, I just don't like it, man. This is a classic example. Of A alikes, B alike, plus they C alike. And if you pay attention, when they kids walked in that room and it was addressed by uh past alumni, coaches, and all this stuff, trying to you know persuade them to you know get past Ed Reed, because they're all down and out right now thinking about it. Because I mean it's been a rough week for Bethune Cookman University. They've been exposed on a lot of dumb shit, getting a lot of negative press. The children are support, you know. Uh, protesting and it's like nobody's no progress is made my thing is this if you all about being woke you sitting up there with the fucking book in your hand pointing at your fucking head you should have had that fucking book and the microphone protesting with them kids Ed Reed was right on that you ain't go out there and say nothing you ain't go out there and say what count. You could have been like, guys, listen, man, I went to this school. It's problems here. You could have said so. That's the thing. It's a lot of men there that's supposed to be, you know, educated, successful. But nobody was out there with them kids. You could have went out there and spoken in defense of the university. Stevie Bags, you probably out there chilling when they called the cops on them and anything could have happened. Where was you at? Oh, I forgot. He was on the other side of the fence. Guys, just let it go. Just let it go. 
slave talk, dumb shit. We got to stop this, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, man, there's something wrong with us. And it's like everybody's out for personal gain. And I understand you only got one life and you're the only one going in the casket. But you don't step on the backs and the heads of your own damn people to get something that's a little bit of fucking nothing. I'm not uh, in the church or nothing like that. But sometimes, it's, you know, you hear people in church say what God has for me has is for me. You're going to get yours. I think he shows poor character. And I think he showed poor judgment. I don't know the man personally, but I'm just speaking off of what I see. Ways and actions say a lot about who you are. I'm a big character guy, and Stevie uh, Bags got poor character to me. You can't do a whole bunch of bu bullshit, you know, and, all, and he's not a non-educated dude. He went to college and everything else. He knows what he's doing. As men, we're what? Responsible for our actions. But nobody brings that stuff up. You sitting on fucking Instagram and licking your damn lips and all this other stuff telling people, oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. Ed Reed, hey, you got choice words for Ed Reed, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, fake, fake stuff. He got an ulterior motive at that school and it'll come out, it'll come out in time. Maybe he want Reggie Thea's job later on in life. We don't know. But it's just funny how when he walked in there to talk to them kids, when they walked in there, the president, Reggie Theus, and him walked in, and they showed him who was up in the front. Stevie Bags, looking mean. <clears throat> it's a serious time with your fucking man bag on. Get the fuck out of here. Listen. If you watch the video, and I'm going to leave it in link, y'all check it out. Watch how Stevie Bags was acting. Dick eating at his finest. Dick eating at his finest. Look at the president. Look how we talk with the microphone. Now you are the leader of an astute HBCU. He up there talking with the mic. He don't even know how to fucking address the mic. He talking with the microphone and moving his hand with the mic in his hand like this. You couldn't even stand up there. Good posture. Confidence. Hey, listen, guys. We know we let you down, but this is what we're proposing. We're sorry. We can't please all of you, but you're here, and it's our job to Common sense shit. He's sitting up there, the president. On one part, he he's shaking his legs the whole time. He linked the fuck back. Everybody else sitting up, he linked the fuck back. You know what that is? That's anxiety. I don't want to be here. Hurry up and let's wrap this shit the fuck up. He got old coaches in there. And other people talking. The coach come in there, and I want y'all to pay attention. The coach come in there and say what? What time is it? Who are we? What time is it? Game time. It's not even the fucking season. Now, I know the, young, the uh, older gentleman, and he seemed like a good dude. I don't want to, you know, bash him or nothing like that. But when he was saying, what, what time is it? You should have seen the students. They're like, what the fuck is this? Nobody was feeling it because they still hurt, and they ain't got over that resolve. And y'all not trying to address that resolve. You're trying to lightly talk over it and then say, hey, guys, we got to move on. You can't move on. That's like having a parent. Or like I gave you the perfect example. You got a child, you got male and female. Sometimes things work, don't work out and families separate. The child has to go with one or the other in custody, but they don't stop thinking about the impression that the other uh, parent put on them. And the other parent shouldn't say, hey, just forget about it. Keep moving forward. You can't because the imprint in your uh, subconscious and all that stuff, ways and actions, your behaviors and things like that, it's all instilled in, in, the, in the child. And they it was an impression. Ed Reed left an impression on them, a father figure and all that. And all of a sudden you're saying, just leave it alone. In that short period of time, he earned enough respect for them. Who the fuck are you or anybody else to tell somebody how to feel about somebody they really cared about and thought they cared about them? Let's just move on. You can't dismiss that. But guys, listen, man. Stevie Bags is not my type of dude anyway. He not stand up. You know, he run around. He say what you want to hear. But if you look through it, you see the real. Now, that's all I'm going to say about him, man. You know, it is what it is, guys. I'm Steve, man. I'll see you in the next video. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
give me your honest opinion about what I said in the video and check these other videos out. I'll leave uh, also the video where, you know, it, it has the trailer of Stevie uh, Bags on this show, on his, on his new reality TV show. And you tell me if this is the mind of a woke man. Because whoever produced that show, it's always an agenda. And what you see here you, and, and here, what was the agenda to this? How was being on them shows beneficial for black people if you was woke? You know what I mean? Stevie Bag, stop chasing that bag, man. I'm out.